This is the lore that I'm going to use today. A, uh, a little jerk bait. Um, it's got the little holographic stuff on the inside of it. Um, I'm going to make a perch pattern today. So, check that out. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to be or anything like that. We'll put it in like little clips as it goes. The tips and different, um, the different steps of making it. Um, hope you guys like it. think it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. <laughs> With this, all I do is I just clip it in here. Um, a lot of people, some people paint the bill. You can paint the bill if you want to. With this one, I'm not going to paint the bill. Have it taped off. Um, and after I'm done painting it, then I can take that off. And then I put the epoxy coat over it. And then it's fine. It's clear on the front. Um, just clip it in there like that. Make it flat. These are actually some lures that I just got done painting. Not too long ago. I still got to put some epoxy on them. You see those? Lipless crank and then some little feather like um, this bait is pretty cool. Um, first starting out with the because it's the it's got the um, the uh, what's it called the holographic coating on the inside of it. You don't I usually don't want to put a base coat that's really thick because you want to be able to see that come through it. So I just use this light green as the base coat for the perch. Um, paint goes a long ways with an airbrush so you only really need a couple drops you don't need very much just drip it on in there if you see in there there's not very much there's very little bit and if you ever need if you need some more you can just put a little bit more in there turn the air compressor on with this you can push it halfway like that and just the air is coming out just the air there's no paint yet once you put it just a little bit more then the paint starts coming out um, and I just go ahead and coat the whole thing over with it. You can see the green, it's starting to, starting to darken it up a little bit, making it shine a little different. Just coat the whole thing. Um, there's going to be other colors over this, so later on if you want to touch it up and stuff, you can. This is kind of just to get the base base coat going. Alright, so I'm just about done. Doing the uh, base coat. I don't know if you can still see that, but when you shine it on there, you can see the holographics shining still on the inside of that. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not. Um, next color I'm going to use is a dark green. Um, it's called the Detail Moss Green from um, Wicked Colors by Createx. Um, these are some good colors. You can get them at Hobby Lobby and you can buy them off their website. You can get them at different places. Um, you can hear there's a little thing in there, a little plastic thing in the paint. When you shake it, it shakes it up. It helps you get it shaked up real good. So it's not too thick, so it comes out your air gun. And uh, if it is too thick, you're going to want to get some of this, which is uh, paint thinner for um, acrylics paint. You just put it in there. It's called Wicked Reducer reduces the paint down so it sprays through your gun cleaner nicer once that gets shaked up just put however much you want in there don't put a whole lot but if you do put too much then you can put it back in the bottle at the end it's fine um, just put a couple drops in there you can see in there not a whole lot you don't really need a whole lot it's spraying out good what I do is I start at the top, I get the back of the lure.
You can see that darkening up and out. I don't know if you can see it on the video. Darken the head up a little bit too. Around the eyes. Sometimes you have to mess with the gun, get the paint come out a little better. Darken up around the eyes. Um, once you paint on it, sometimes if it's a little thick, you can just use the, just the air. And you just use the air part. You can air on it and it dries real quick, real fast. Get both sides of the head done. Part, this is the part that's kind of tedious it has to be really a lot of some people use um, like stencils like like this you could use this to make your lines you hold it up like that and you spray on it and it would make the lines on there for the perch pattern but uh, I've done that a lot I've done that some but lately I've just been trying to do it freehand just doing my own little freehand thing it's kind of cool because it makes it get it gives it kind of your own style if you do it like that everyone's the same you do it like this it kind of everyone's up the, the whole pattern parts a little different but if you think about it every fish is the same so it really doesn't it's not really gonna mess a whole lot up if it's not the whole the little lines aren't exactly the same every time that's what I think anyways but yeah Um, that's kind of just the first, the first lining of it and stuff. You can go through and do other little details, make it darker, make it whatever you want to do. If you make the, want to make the lines a little wider, you can do that. Go through and darken the lines up. Um, just do, I do the same thing on that side and I flip it over and try to line the lines up on the back with the same, same thing as the other side. Get the same amount of lines and, uh, then that part's all done. And that's most of the, most of the detailed stuff is that. After that, you're pretty good. Um, if you can see, I got the uh, the uh, perch pattern, the perch lines on the on the sides of it. Got them all lined up, nice and even, evened up the best I can. And they're not gonna be perfect off that. Um, if you can see, I just got done doing all this, but I had a little bit of leftover paint, and uh, you don't want to waste it, so you just dump it back in. That's what I do. Try to get as much of it you can out, and clean your clean your uh, your bowl out on the top of your airbrush. You can see I got done with this. The over here. If you see I got done with the stripes on this. Next, I'm going to do the orange on the belly, and then a little bit orange here on the uh, on the gill. Um, and then there's not really too much left in it. All right, so 
I got the base coat, the, the lime green, because I got the holographic things underneath there, and when the light shines on it, you don't want a really thick base coat. I got the dark green on the top, around the heads, and then the dark green um, stripes on the side for the, ba the uh, perch pattern. Next, I got this orange. Um, it's just called Wicked Orange. Um, shake that up real good. This one seems to be a little runnier. So sometimes you don't want to use a lot of it at one time because then it'll run. Uh, so you want to do it in kind of in coats. Like spray a little bit, dry it. If it's not thick enough, it doesn't have enough thickness. Spray a little bit more, dry it. So you put a whole bunch on one time, a lot of times it starts running or it bunches all up and it pulls up and it doesn't look very good. Shake that up. See, that's a lot runnier. Come out there. Um, next, I'm gonna do the the, uh, the orange right here under the under the um, the head under the belly. Um, I think I'm just gonna do the whole thing orange, or the whole bottom, just to. Uh, just to get the good good color and stuff. On. So when it's coming through the water, a lot of times it comes real fast by the bass, and they're really not going to see all of the orange. But or the orange, we just put a little bit right here. But if you put it all in the whole thing, sometimes the big strip of it, they're going to see the whole thing, and they're going to be like, "Oh, it's real." Or oh, it looks it looks more natural, or it looks like this. Because really, when this is coming through the water, it's not just sitting there like this. So they're not going to look at it and be like, "Oh, that's a perch." It's going to be coming through the water. So they're going to be seeing the stripes, they're going to be seeing the color patterns, and they're going to say, oh, it's a perch, boom, and they're going to eat it. Because they only have a couple seconds there to jump on it real fast before it comes by them. Alright, see how I stopped right there? I'm just air blow it. There's no paint coming out right now, I'm just drying it. Just dry that first coat. And if you want to put a little more, then just put another coat on it. Now right up here on the gill, by the gill patterns up here, I'm going to get a little bit of orange right there. Just a little bit, you don't want a lot. See just a little bit of the orange on there. Let me go ahead and flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. All right, the uh, the next little detail you can see I got the little orange on there where the gill is. The next little detail is right where the gill is, where those lines are. You can see you want to get a little bit of red right behind there to make it look like that's the gill pattern, the blood red. So one there and one here. What I use is this corner. And uh, sometimes I get this right, sometimes I don't. If I don't, then, oh well, it still works. You just uh, line this up. Right here with that pattern, you can see where the, the edge is of that. Just line it up right on the edge here. And you want 
to paint behind it really. You want to get the overspray on it. Get it a little red, like that. So it's got the orange there, which you can, you can, if you want to, you can um, brighten up that orange and stuff too after. This is just the details work. And up here in the front, you do it again. Depend, depending on what your blank is like, wherever the little detailed uh, gill patterns are. Remember, this is a holographic lure, so uh, I'm not doing it really, really thick, all the paint. So like that right there is not real thick. If it was in a holographic lure and I just did the whole thing in a real thick base coat, I would make that red thicker, I'd make the orange thicker, down here would be thicker. So the, the colors would pop more, but because it's holographic, you want the holographic part to shine through. Um, so once you get done with that side, then you just do the other side too. Flip it on over. Alright, um, I got most of the painting done. Um, I mean, you could darken that up a little bit more. You could do some other little detailed work and stuff on it. But that's all I do mostly with mine. Um, the next is the eyes, these holographic eyes. Um, the holographic eyes just go right in the hole and they're um, adhesive. So once they go in there, you can just push them on. And once you put the epoxy coat on, it's all sealed. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um... Sometimes it's a little tough to line these up straight, but just do the best you can. Yeah. So, like that. And then you just might be a little easier actually if I take it out of this and just hold it by the bill. Flip it over. And if you can see on these ones, well, some of them don't, but in the front it's a little bit bigger than in the back. What I usually do is put the bigger part in the front. So uh, if you do the smaller in the front, it's fine. Just try to make both sides the same. Well, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Not to me anyways. Kind of just push on those with your finger. Watch your nails though that they don't hit the paint. Sometimes it can scratch the paint. Take that off. Um, and then that's pretty much it. Once that's on there, that's the ghost. I guess it'd be a ghost perch because it's got the light, real light colors and it shines through, bleeds through the holographic area. And you can use different colored eyes too. This one, I got the little gold in there with the eye. You can use a regular eye. You can use a red eye. You can use a blue eye. Whatever color eye you want. Um, different size eyes, too. So you got to make sure you get the right size for the right size lure. And the next step after this is you take the you can take the, the uh, tape off the front. If you taped it. If you didn't, then you don't have to worry about it. And mix up your epoxy or your top coat that's for it. And epoxy it and top coat it. Let it dry. Wait till it's done. Put the hooks on and... Good to go. Alright, next step to this. Um, my uh, ghost ghost pattern perch. I'm um, going to do the epoxy on it. Um, I use these to brush it on. They're just little kid kid um, paint brushes. You can get 12 of them for a dollar. Sometimes you can get 30 for a dollar. Um, Walmart, Myers, Hobby Lobby, Dollar General. Sometimes you can get them. Dollar Tree. Um, and I just use a, a normal popsicle stick to stir it up. Um, some people use like um, automotive coating and they actually have a, a spray gun that they spray it through, spray top coat. But right now I just use the um, the uh, BSI um, two-part two epoxy, 30 minute cure. 
Uh, five minute cure wouldn't really give you enough time. It says five minutes, but it really is only like two minutes. Um, 30 minutes really gives you not really a whole lot of time, so you kind of want to do it a little quick. Some people do two lures with one batch. I just do one lure with one batch because a lot of times the second lure it's a little more thick and it makes it a little harder and sometimes it doesn't coat it. Um, so you just, well, also this, I use aluminum foil instead of just like a plain plate or something like that because aluminum foil a lot of times stops the um, bubbles and stuff from getting into the epoxy. So when you put it onto, the, onto your lure, there's not as many bubbles and stuff in it. And it ke actually keeps you uh, keeps the bait or keeps the epoxy um, from curing a lot faster, so that you have more time to um, put it on your bait. That's what I I feel like it does. Um, and heard some other people told me about it. You just want to kind of try and even this out. Do a little bit of that one, and you can measure it out perfectly if you want to. Um, I don't, I, didn't, I haven't really had any problems with it. Just gonna try and make it even. See, I need a little bit more of that. Once that's evened out, then you just stir it up. Um, you can actually even put um, glitter in this if you want to in your epoxy when you're stirring it up just dump a little glitter in there so when you put it on your lure they'll actually have it'll have a little shine of glitter um, with this one I'm not going to put any glitter on it and just going to be plain Didn't stop it here. all right I got my epoxy all stirred up um, now you just you just brush it on you don't want to push too hard because sometimes if the these things are a little too hard. It might rub off some of the paint or something. Um, once that gets on, just do nice, even strokes. Even it out on the lure. I'm actually going to take it out of this. So it's easier to hold on to. Just get your epoxy. Dab it on. Even it on out. This part took me a long time to to kind of figure it out. The first probably ten, maybe ten lures, um, there were spots that were missing, or or um, it was too thick in one spot and too thin in another spot. Which is why I don't usually do two lures with one batch because I want I make sure it's all evened out nice and looks good instead of just flopping it on there real quick. Um, there's a bunch of different kinds of epoxy you can use. Um, this is actually the first one I've tried. And the next time when I buy some, I might actually try a different kind. Just to see what I like best. Um, I haven't tried the auto, auto coat colors. Or the auto coat. Um, top coat. There's a lot of people that use it. it. Seems to work good, but I just haven't invested, I guess, in it yet.
Uh, if you can see, I got my uh, my epoxy top coat on it. Uh, got it all spread out, nice and even. And now I just gotta wait for it to dry. And I can put the hooks on and uh, go fishing with it. I think me and my brother are going fishing tomorrow. And it's gonna do wonders. <laughs> um, I just hang it up on a on the thing that I painted it with. Just go ahead and flip the front of it like that. And we just wait for it to dry. Um, really what the best thing is to do for whenever you're letting your epoxy dry is you want you want one, a spin wheel, which people make them. I haven't made one yet. Eventually I'm going to make one. Um, I just use this right now. And uh, at first, for the first about hour, every 15 minutes, I come in and flip the lure over. Because a lot of times the epoxy runs to one side, you flip it over and it'll run to the other. And uh, in between those 15 minutes, I just flip it every now and then so it doesn't pull up in one area. And uh, when it dries, put the hooks on it, and that's it. And uh, hope it was good. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, subscribe to my, my channel. Look for me on uh, Facebook at Haze Camp Outdoors. Also, if you're in the Angola or Fremont area, or if you come here to fish at any of the lakes, um, look at Big B's bait and tackle because some of my lures are there for sale also if you'd like any special um painted patterns or anything let me know and i'll paint them up for you thank you bye yo yeah it's big nice size yeah got her on this Painted this the other day. Nice little perch. All right, here she is, guys. First one of the day.